Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now, I just got home from work, uh, checked in my messages, and like always, I have a bunch of uh, hate mail asking me why I decided to go incorporated on my LS. Um, I didn't go to work today in this because it's full of tires right now. So, uh, as you guys can see, it is 100% stone cold. And, uh, I'm about to move this truck over behind my barn. So my truck is powered by an electric fuel pump. Let me make sure this thing's in neutral. And let's go. Run, run. So because of the type of ignition that I have on here, you will experience extended start time. It's just the nature of the beast. So what I want to talk about today is actually a few myths that I want to go ahead and dispel while I'm here. I have a little bit of time, might as well do a little bit of explanation while I'm doing a little bit of chores around the house. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through five myths people like to spew on the internet about carburetors, starting with number one. Carburetors are harder to tune. And I can understand where a lot of that comes from, that people think that carburetors are harder to tune than fuel injection systems. But I think what people actually mean when they say that is that carburetors have to be tuned versus fuel injection. So what people don't seem to understand is the only reason your project car can actually start up, go inside, turn the key and drive is because somebody sometime in the past decided to design a base map for that particular engine and that's the whole reason you can actually make minor adjustments. In fact, when carbureted cars came out of the assembly line and they all had factory tuned carburetors, these carburetors were set up perfectly for the cars that were coming down and driving on the road. When people started to go ahead and modify them away from their factory parameters, they started adding headers and aluminum intakes and a bigger cam that's when things started going out of whack people started running into problems and frustrations began to be created and a stigma began to form against carburetors because back in the day you didn't have wideband o2 sensors dyno tuning wasn't readily accessible and there wasn't people on the internet showing you what you could do to solve specific issues with your carburetors but now everything's kind of changed if you want to figure out what you need to get a specific 350 with aluminum intake and a thumper cam on an Edelbrock 600, there's a bunch of people who can tell you exactly what they're doing and how it's been running for them. If you can do the same thing with the Holly carburetor, you can find people online who have the exact same setup or something very, very similar, and you can run that exactly on your setup and it will start up and run. From there, you can make minor adjustments to suit your own specific application. So if the common man actually had to go in on a laptop and design their timing table from scratch, their fuel injector map from scratch without any prior input of where it's supposed to be, I think a lot of people would end up saying that fuel injection is a little bit harder to tune. But because we have the luxury of the internet and people can readily accessibly share their base maps, People just need to make a couple changes on the parameters, need to add a little bit more fuel up on the top end, maybe adjust their timing map a little bit, a couple degrees here, a couple degrees there. But that's not something you can't do on carburetors anymore because we've got new ignition boxes that can do almost the exact same thing. And the fuel trim can actually be controlled from the carburetor itself. And for the naysayers out there, high performance tuning on a carburetor is actually much easier than on fuel injection. And the whole reason for that is because of the charge cooling effect when fresh air comes in through the carburetor because fuel is at its furthest point away from the engine, the air has time to mix with the fuel. He can actually be pulled from the air at the carburetor and by the time it travels through the intake and into the engine, you've got intake temps that are significantly lower when compared to EFI. And because of that, you have much less chance for uh, pre-detonation, for spark knock, you have more leeway on boosted applications because you can run a much colder, much richer spark more easily, and you don't have to go buy six, seven, eight hundred dollar sets of injectors every time you wanna make more power. When while I'm at it, let me remind you that tuners aren't the end all be all. Tuners can make mistakes. Tuners have blown up engines before. And sometimes to cover up the inconsistencies in the fuel curve, 
Tuners have been known to overcompensate on the injectors and you're actually running inefficient fuel maps because you have little holes in the map that they weren't able to tune out. The next myth we're gonna talk about is that carburetors constantly need adjusting. So this myth also comes from back in the day where cars used to run really good in the summer and really poorly in the winter and you had really harsh conditions where the carburetor would have a lot of different problems and you would have to go to the mechanic or carburetor shop and then get your winter tune, get your summer tune and people would drive around until the next season and they'd have problems again. Most of those problems actually stemmed from not having enough knowledge of a car's ignition system and fuel system so they weren't able to get optimal tunes when setting up their carburetors. For example, nowadays it's common to get 13 to 20 degrees of timing at idle when before the timing was set at anywhere from 0 to 5 degrees below the top dead center. So you would get problems like hard cold starts in the morning or drivability issues like hesitation or backfiring when all of that actually comes to carburetor tuning when you are setting up a carburetor if you're setting it up correctly you're going to want to set up your carburetor not too rich and not too lean and you're going to want to give it enough timing so that way it can encompass most situations without you having to touch the carburetor at all i've driven my truck in the snow below 30 degree weather over 105 degree weather while towing and i haven't had to touch the carburetor not once not the idle circuit not the transition circuit not the power valve i haven't touched anything uh, it's been probably a good six months and i haven't done anything everything from winter to right now in the dead middle of summer i haven't had to do anything to the carburetor and everything's been good it just depends on how well you tune it and how well you're paying attention to that afr gauge the next myth we're going to talk about is that carburetors get less gas mileage than fuel injection cars and that's actually partially true and we're going to go ahead and go over that like I mentioned before, you have to set up your carburetor so it encompasses a majority of situations. Because of that, you have a little bit of give and take when it comes to carburetor tuning. If you want dead nuts performance in every minute of the day and every day of the season and every season of the year, you're going to want to set it up so you get that little bit of extra fuel when coming up from a stop, when going to pass a car, when trying to just go full throttle. You want crisp and clear performance and you can't really do that when you're worried about mpgs believe it or not carburetor cars have very very snappy performance because they can get fuel to the cylinder physically faster than you can with efi as soon as your pedal moves you got fuel instantly running down the carburetor and into the intake because it's running down through the intake it's cooling the charge and you're getting a much cleaner burn but if you were to build an mpg focused carburetor build you could probably get the same mpg as an efi version of the same engine but you would have to sacrifice a little bit of performance or have to overcompensate in other parts of the carburetor but if your focus is mpg there are several ways to get around it the rule of carburetors is always a kind of a c saw effect whatever you do to one the other side kind of fails and you have to find that balance for everything so carburetors depending on the tune probably will get worse mpg but it's not impossible to get good gas mileage on a carbureted engine so for the fourth myth we're actually going to talk about cold starts again and why they're actually not a big deal in carbureted applications like i mentioned before it all comes down to tuning and really back in the day again when cars were originally on the road you had these engineers design cars with less than optimal timing maps they had distributor ignition they had wearable parts and the older an engine got and the more worn the, the serviceable parts became the weaker the spark was and you'd have a much bigger issue trying to start your engine when it's cold put that together with poorly designed heads and intake system and you have pretty much a recipe for disaster on the other hand if you go and carburate something like an ls that has computer assisted designed heads it has really high compression it allows you to tune the ignition map however you want you won't have any kind of issues whatsoever in cold weather because you can add the timing that you need in the situations that you need it in fact the msd 6014 gives you the option to run an additional timing map alongside your coolant temperature sensor so when you're doing a cold start your ignition map will automatically adjust anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees while it's cold and it'll start backing it off as soon as it starts getting warm because they know that 
ignition timing is everything for a carburetor and more. So I personally haven't had any cold start issues with any kind of LS. Maybe I've had more cold start issues with like older cars that had worn out ignition components, but really even fuel injection systems can get worn out. And the last carburetor myth we're actually gonna talk about is that carbureted engines make less power than EFI. And that I can tell you is 100% false. People like to use the LS because it's the darling of the automotive world, at least until the next engine comes out that's even better, I hope. People like to say when comparing a stock EFI intake to a carbureted intake, the EFI intake makes more power. But that's not actually comparing apples to apples. If we were comparing apples to apples, you would run fuel injection on a carbureted intake because it's not the fuel delivery that changes the power curve it's the intake design if any of you guys have ever watched richard holdner you guys will know that the intake design controls a lot more than what you think and because we have plastics and polymers that we can use to build different kinds of intakes we have that advantage to fine tune and tweak to get the desired curve that we want so people are going to say well yeah so run the intake that you want run fuel injection on it and you're good to go but there's a big caveat in that and that one comes down to maximum performance of an engine if we compare apples to apples full-blown race cars back to back and we do an efi run and then we do a carburetor run with two very similarly set up engines they're probably going to run almost the same amount of time on the quarter mile or they're going to make almost the same amount of horsepower on the dyno and that's because the more closer you get to higher and higher performance engines, the more the line is actually blurred between EFI and a carbureted application. What I mean by that is once you get to a certain power level or a certain amount of pressure in the intake manifold or a certain amount of horsepower on your power curve, you are basically running your injectors almost wide open at the entire time compare that to a carburetor that's basically running fuel down the engine almost the entire time any extra amount of fuel sits on the back of the intake valve cools down the intake valve and goes inside the combustion chamber what you guys will gain in intake manifold design you guys will lose that in charge cooling effect that the carburetor inherently has and because of that the more higher horsepower you get doesn't matter if you're on naturally aspirated doesn't matter if you're turbo doesn't matter if you're nitrous doesn't matter if you're on a blower if you set up the carburetor as best as you can, if you set up EFI as best as you can on the same exact engine, you're probably gonna make almost the exact same power with very, very little difference one way or the other. Both systems in higher performance applications have their pros and their cons and they do even out that's why a tons of people are still winning races with carburetors tons of people are still winning races with efi and not one bashes the other because they both know they each are playing to their own advantage and they're happy with what they have so this debate with which one is better it actually depends on what you actually want to do if you don't want to learn about tuning if you don't want to learn about setting up a car if you just want to put fancy parts on it take it to a tuner have them tune it for you and drive it then you go with efi if you want something that you can throw on learn how to tune yourself learn how to read afrs learn how to tune different sides of the circuit and make it your own then you go carbureted it's more of a personal thing it's not actually a technical thing so if you guys want more of these types of videos, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Night Rancher out.